Self-driving cars are the future of transportation. This is something that most people can probably agree on. But in the meantime, self-driving cars are also a potentially deadly menace to society, and there is no shortage of evidence to back this up. So just what the hell is going on with these autonomous vehicles? Let's go searching for the truth. I want to get out ahead and address Tesla right off the top, and we'll get back to this point near the end, but for the majority of this video, we are not going to be talking about Tesla because there is no such thing as a self-driving Tesla. You heard me, there is no self-driving Tesla because Tesla software is explicitly designed to be used with a human being in the driver's seat, with their hands on the wheel and foot on the pedal ready to intervene at any time, which is ironic considering the frequency of headlines you'll see claiming that Tesla's autopilot is a cold-blooded killer, but the fact remains that any Tesla operating autonomously is only as dangerous as the human person in charge allows it to be. What I want to talk about is a significantly more dangerous experiment that has been playing out on the streets of America over the past year. Driverless robo-taxis operating with zero human supervision or intervention, traveling alongside unsuspecting citizens, and leaving a trail of chaos in their wake. 2023 was a huge year for the self-driving car, particularly in the state of California, where it saw an unprecedented explosion in the use of driverless robo-taxis that logged a total of 3.3 million self-driven miles, five times more than the previous year. But this boom of autonomous driving was quickly followed by an abrupt fracture in public trust that will likely see the industry struggle to regain its footing in 2024. Here is the scoop. After a limited pilot project in 2022, the city of San Francisco approved the self-driving car companies Waymo and Cruz to expand their operations in August of 2023, which opened a Pandora's box of robo-taxis into the densely crowded and complex city streets. The General Motors-owned Cruz quickly became the most prominent self-driving operation in town, setting 300 robotic Chevrolet Bolt EVs loose on San Francisco every night. And just as quickly, those cars became a local meme. The cruise vehicles had a tendency to just stop in the middle of traffic and block the road, refusing to budge. In one particular incident, 10 driverless cruise vehicles froze up on the same block and brought city traffic to a standstill. It was all a bit of a joke until someone got hurt. The first thing that the people at Cruise would want you to know is that a human-driven vehicle hit the person before the robo-taxi ran them over. That is very important to note. At 9.30 p.m. on October 2nd, 2023, in San Francisco, a pedestrian was struck by a vehicle being driven by a human person. The force of that impact pushed the victim further into the road and into the path of an oncoming cruise robo-taxi. The cruise vehicle braked aggressively once the pedestrian entered its path, but wasn't able to stop before running them over with the front wheels. Now, if that is where the story ended, then this would still be a terrible thing, but there wouldn't be any particular concern regarding the driverless car. If anything, you could say that the robo-taxi made the right move by stopping as quickly as possible. But it's what happens next that the people at Cruz don't want you to know. And this will make your skin crawl. After running the person over and coming to a stop, the Cruz robo-taxi actually started to drive away. It continued on for a distance of around 20 feet at a speed of up to 7 miles per hour and pulled over to the side of the road. The whole time, it was dragging the wounded pedestrian underneath the body of the vehicle, and by the time the robo-taxi came to a stop, the rear wheel was now sitting on top of the person's leg. When firefighters arrived, they had to use the jaws of life to lift the Chevrolet Bolt off of the now severely wounded individual, who miraculously did survive the incident. And this really plays into our true fear of robots and AI. It's what makes science fiction stories like The Terminator and The Matrix so compelling, that these machines could obliterate us simply by accident, 
with zero compassion or remorse involved, and there would be nothing that we could do to stop them. Now, this situation we just described was by far the most concerning accident involving a cruise autonomous vehicle, but it was definitely not the first or the last. And to be fair, of the millions of miles driven by these robo-taxis, there have been relatively few reported accidents, and most accidents do involve a human driver smashing into the robo-taxi, but we still have confirmed accidents of self-driving cars driving themselves straight into buses, fire trucks, and construction sites. While no one was hurt at any of these incidents, not directly at least, they actually represent the most concerning aspect of self-driving vehicles. If people aren't in control, then what is? And why does it make seemingly simple mistakes at seemingly random moments? If we look at one of these cruise-equipped Chevrolet Bolt EVs, we'll very quickly notice the massive sensor array strapped to the roof. This is the quote-unquote brain of the autonomous vehicle, and up there you'll find high-tech LiDAR sensors that use pulsed laser beams to precisely measure variable distances in a 360-degree range around the car. There's a high-precision GPS unit and cellular transmitter so that the car can always find itself on the map. You'll also find radar, which sends out radio waves in all directions to detect solid objects. The vehicle is also rigged up with high-definition cameras pointed in every conceivable direction that are linked into a computer vision algorithm for identifying and labeling objects in the real world, and surrounding the perimeter of the robotaxi is a series of ultrasonic sensors that use high-frequency pulses to create accurate measurements of the distance between the body of the vehicle and any object in its proximity. With all of this amazing technology on board, a cruise autonomous vehicle can still manage to confidently drive itself straight into a solid object the size of a city bus, or as visible as a fire truck. So, how could that be? And how do we decide what is or is not considered to be a self-driving car? Well, it's complicated. So, I've been using a new web browser, and I really like it. Let me tell you a bit about Opera. This is the most feature-rich internet browsing experience I have ever had, and that's interesting to me because I've never really given much thought to the features of a web browser aside from, you know, browsing the web. But when you see what Opera has to offer, you won't want to go back. For example, this automatic pop-out view keeps my YouTube video playing seamlessly as I browse around to other tabs, and this blew my mind the first time it happened because I didn't even know I wanted that, but I love it and now I can't live without this feature. I've also fallen in love with workspaces. Using the Opera sidebar, I can quickly toggle between dedicated spaces for each of the video projects that I'm working on, and I can just as easily flip to a clean space for when I'm not working on anything at all. Using workspaces in conjunction with using Opera's tab islands to group and organize my browser tabs is keeping my online workflow more organized and productive than ever before. The sidebar also lets me control my music player directly from inside the browser, which just makes life easy. And speaking of that, Opera makes security easier than any other product I've used on the web. This browser has a built-in ad blocker with no extension required, and it even has an integrated VPN that I can quickly toggle on and off whenever I need to do some sensitive web browsing. Of course, the best feature of all is that Opera is totally free to use and shockingly easy to get set up. So take my advice and give Opera a try for yourself using my link in the description below. I really think you're gonna like it. So there are five levels of vehicle autonomy. Well, six really, because there is a level zero which has zero active driving assist features, although anti-lock brakes and electronic stability control still technically fall into this category. Level one is considered having one active driver assist feature. This could be something like lane keep assist with auto steer, or an automatic collision avoidance system, or active cruise control. Level two is simply having two or more of these active features going on at the same time, so the car is able to control the steering, the braking, and the acceleration all at the same time. This is where most new cars today are located on the self-driving scale, level two. The car can actively assist the human with all aspects of the driving experience, but the human still has to remain in control 100% of the time. Beyond level two is where things start to get messy, because now we have to start drawing a clear line between times when the vehicle systems 
are assisting the driver and times when the vehicle systems become the driver. Level 3 is a state where the car can drive itself under very specific circumstances, but still requires a human to be in the driver's seat at all times and ready to take charge on short notice. So imagine you pull onto the freeway, you put the car into self-driving mode, and you can now start text messaging or playing video games with no regard for what the car is doing, yet still being ready to take the wheel when the vehicle sees something out of the ordinary, like an emergency vehicle or a construction site. Regardless of what anyone might try and tell you, there is no consumer vehicle that has reached level 3 autonomy, there's no circumstance where you can just pull out your phone and watch a movie while your car navigates itself through traffic, not without breaking some kind of law at least. Level 4 is where existing robo-taxis like Cruise operate, or at least they claim to. By definition, a level 4 autonomous vehicle will be able to fully self-drive in all circumstances with no human being in the driver's seat, although there still would be manual controls and a person could operate the vehicle if they choose, but the vehicle should not require a person to operate safely on public roads. The problem with the existing robotaxi model is that the vehicles can drive fully autonomously until they can't. Until they smash into a bus, or stop dead in the middle of an intersection, or block an ambulance, or drag a person 20 feet down the road while they scream for mercy. In all of those situations, a human being behind the wheel could have, should have, intervened to make a safe decision, but there was no human to be found. So if robotaxis still can't be trusted to not make catastrophic mistakes, then they obviously can't be considered to be safe, right? And that's pretty much the decision that was made by the California DMV on October 27th, 2023, when they suspended the license for crews to operate their vehicles on public roads. It had only been two months since the city of San Francisco had given the green light to expand the robotaxi experiment, and things were already falling apart. By November 14th, 2023, Cruz announced that they would suspend all vehicle operations, including supervised and manually driven taxis, in a nationwide shutdown. And then, just five days later, Cruz founder and CEO Kyle Vaught announced his resignation from the company. So, things are looking pretty grim for the self-driving robotaxi in 2024, but that is only because we haven't brought Tesla into the picture yet, right? Elon Musk says that real full self-driving is going to happen this year, although he also said the same thing last year, and the year before that, and the year before that, and pretty much every year dating all the way back to 2014. So by Elon's metric, full autonomy has been just a year away for the past decade. That's not to say Tesla has been sitting still this entire time. The company has undoubtedly made gigantic strides forward in artificial intelligence-based driver assist features. There is no other level 2 autonomous system on the market that can do anything close to what full self-driving has accomplished in its latest beta software release, even though there is still no such thing as a fully self-driving Tesla. And that's because there is also no level 4 autonomous system that is anywhere near as unpredictable and dangerous as the full self-driving beta has shown itself to be. Here's what I mean. On the one hand, we have Cruise self-driving, which has a definite tendency to get confused in the middle of an intersection, and when it does, the car will just give up and stop dead in the road. At best, this is massively annoying for anyone that gets stuck in the resulting traffic jam. At worst, these situations can be disastrous for first responders who need to move through the area to reach a fire or a person in distress. On the other hand, we have our full self-driving beta Tesla, which also has a definite tendency to get confused in the middle of an action on the road. But instead of just coming to a stop or disengaging the software, the Tesla will pull a Leroy Jenkins and go charging headstrong into certain doom, giving the human driver only milliseconds to seize the wheel and pull their vehicle back from the brink of destruction. And that sounds like an exaggeration, I'll admit we are having a bit of fun here, but I have watched a lot of FSD beta videos over the past three years, it's literally my job, and in almost every single case, 
there is at least one moment where the driver has to actively stop the car from doing something disastrous to itself and its surroundings. So where do we draw the line? Because obviously a driverless car can't just be safe and reliable most of the time. It needs to be operating in at least a reasonably safe manner all of the time, or 99.9999% of the time. But that begs the question, what is safe? If we are talking about safety and reliability of a human driver, then there are some pretty bad ones out there, right? The majority of human-involved accidents can almost always be related back to either impatience or inattention, which are conditions that a robot should be immune from by nature. Yet even the stupidest humans among us can understand basic concepts, like getting out of the way when a fire truck is coming, or not stopping the car and giving up in the middle of an intersection, not casually driving away with a body underneath your car. And this is where Tesla comes roaring back into the picture, because Elon Musk made the decision long ago to take all of those fancy sensors that are typical of a robotaxi, the LiDAR, the radar, the ultrasonics, and he threw those in the trash. Now, those devices are exceptional at taking measurements, no one is denying that, but Tesla figured out that driving doesn't actually require measurements. That's not how people drive. We use our eyes and our brain. The fundamental requirements to drive a car are vision and intelligence. What Elon is pursuing with Tesla's full self-driving program is a purely artificial intelligence-based solution to autonomous vehicles. And this is where we hit a gray area, because even the people who work with AI full-time don't really know what it's doing. We know that it needs to be trained, but there's no metric to say how much training is required to reach a certain level of functionality, and sometimes you can train an AI to get better at one particular function, while it gets worse at another. The whole process is a balancing act with no definitive end. So while there is no full self-driving Tesla right now, there definitely could be, there probably will be, and it might arrive in a month, in a year, in a decade, there's no way to know for sure, but I can assure you that we'll know it when we see it.